Hi everyone, welcome to KTU Web. In this video, we are going to discuss about endurance limit or fatigue limit. You come across this term when you design an element which experiences fatigue loading or a cyclic loading. In this video, we will discuss about why we are calculating endurance limit and how to find endurance limit of a material. Then we come across the definition of endurance limit and then we can wind up this session with the application of endurance limit. Let us put endurance limit this way. Why we need a certain limitation while designing an element? The limitation is all about to identify the capacity of a material. So the capacity of material will be differ in a different situations. So according to the loading condition, the capacity will change time to time. The loading on a material can be broadly classified into two. The first category is the static loading situation and the second category is what we call the dynamic loading or cyclic loading or famously known as the fatigue loading condition. Okay, let us discuss about the static loading situation. The static loading means the load will not change its magnitude or the direction with respect to time. In case of static loading, you have this two different situation. When a ductile material experience a static load or otherwise at the time brittle materials experience a static load. Hope you remember this very common stress strain graph of ductile material. This graph shows that at a particular point, that point may be right here, this material will experience a permanent deformation. That means after this point, the material will change its property. Oh, it will change its dimension that means basically that material failed this point uh, what we call the yield point of that material yielding happening upon this point so why yielding is so important when you discuss a static loading on tactile material here yielding act as a limiting factor after yielding you cannot give more stress on that original material that failure happening on yielding so in this case yielding is the limiting factor when you design static load upon ductile material you can consider yielding and you should maintain the load below the yielding stress then the design will be safe the same is a different story in case of a brittle material. In case of brittle material, it will not give you an yielding. Instead of that, it will suddenly fail upon a particular point, a maximum stress value situation. This point what we call sigma u or the ultimate stress, the ultimate stress value. What is the importance of ultimate stress value in case you apply a static load upon brittle material? It goes this way, upon uh, ultimate load, this material will fail all of the sudden. That means ultimate uh, stress value act as a limiting factor for brittle material. So when you design static load on brittle material, you should maintain the stress value below its ultimate stress and you need to consider a factor of safety accordingly. So these are the two information we need when you design static load, either yield stress on ductile or ultimate stress in case of brittle material. But in certain situation, these are two limiting factor will not be enough to define when that material going to fail because in certain loading condition material will fail below its yield point that a situation what we call the dynamic loading situation so here is an example for dynamic load term dynamic or a cyclic means the load is not constant with respect to time here you could see this load is varying with respect to time at the beginning there is no load then load 
increases up to a positive direction then go back to zero and here the stress is a changing is a direction at the first uh, cycle it shows as a tensile situation then it uh, changes to compression so here tension and compression is experienced that material time by time if you don't understand about a dynamic or cyclic loading i made a video in detail about a dynamic and cyclic loading and what are the types of dynamic and nomenclature of this kind of stresses if you are not aware about uh, those things stop this video right now and go back to my previous videos so dynamic load situation is pretty much different with a static load situation here you have uh, two factors which influence over the ability of that stress to make a fatigue or a failure here the two factors are the amplitude of that stress the first two factor is amplitude of stress amplitude of stress what we call sigma amplitude and the second factor is the number of cycles the number of cycles here if you consider it as a stress cycle this is what the 360 degree cycle so this is what the one cycle right here cycle number 1 and this cycle is a uh, repeating again this what cycle number 2 and uh, you could expect uh, cycles continuously happening on that material amplitude of stress means the maximum displacement from the mean point here this distance this value of stress what we call the amplitude of stress so what is the relation between these two factors when you consider the failure of material suppose this a uh, stress cycle is acting upon this uh, cantilever beam it will fail even before yielding if you increase the amplitude of this uh, stress value it may last a few number of cycles suppose uh, if you give a high amplitude like uh, sigma a is equal to some 500 megapascal it will last around uh, some n equal to 100 cycles so for 500 megapascal it only last on 100 cycle this material will fail after that then you change the amplitude into bit low value like some 100 megapascal if you change the amplitude of that stresses this material may withstand some more number of cycle maybe some 2000 number of cycle that means when you reduce the stress value there will be an increase in number of cycle or otherwise when you increase the stress value there will be a reduction in number of cycle so this is almost like an indirect proportion this is a situation how can you arrange this amplitude and number of cycle in a better optimal way to predict when the material going to fail so for that purpose i am going to construct a graph a graph uh, between number of cycles and amplitude of stress here we have an xy diagram and on x axis i am going to take number of cycles number of cycles and on y axis i am going to plot the amplitude of stress amplitude of stress the x axis uh, unit will goes like this 1 2 3 8 and keep going and in x axis we have uh, the amplitude uh, stress value and maybe you can denote this as s the stress values and remember one thing this x axis is on log to the base 10 scale that means when you take this point 3 that this is corresponding to 10 raised to 3 so when you pointing out this particular point that point 6 it represent 10 raised to 6 that is equal to 
one million cycles so it is a log to the base 10 cycles for our convenience to represent a much pretty much big big numbers since we are taking log scale on x-axis we are also taking log scale on y-axis so here the stress value is log to the base 10 so when you want to retrieve a value from this graph you have to take anti log so here we are going to conduct an experiment consider the same example you have a cantilever beam right here and you're going to apply a cyclic a load on this that means a load that changes direction as well as magnitude with respect to time here I can also mark the yield stress value of this material as well as the ultimate stress value of this material and we are going to conduct an experiment upon this graph here we have a cantilever beam which experiences a cyclic loading and we're going to plot some values according to that exercise at the beginning suppose you put some values just above its ultimate uh, stress suppose you take a stress value higher than ultimate suddenly it will uh, fail it will give you a failure point uh, right here any value higher than uh, ultimate stress the same is applicable when you're trying to give some stress value higher than its yield it will start yielding means it uh, failed pretty much everywhere near to sigma y value and sigma u value the cyclic loading only comes to picture when you apply a load below its yielding suppose we are going to apply a value of amplitude stress below its yielding the stress of that cyclic stress is below the sigma y value suppose i'm going to take this particular sigma y value this material may reach a 10 cycle that means after 10 cycle it fail that you are getting a failure point right here then uh, we need to improve the number of cycle we want to increase the number of cycle so that i reduce the amplitude value again and when i'm reducing that material will reach some 10 square number of cycle and if you need further improvement in number of cycle and you keep reducing this value this may reach some 10 raised to threes that is the thousand cycle right here and if you want to improve again you can reduce the stress value on y-axis and it may reach for the more number of cycle than goes just like this all the way and if you go for different couple of stress value you may get a different failure point all the way in this graph in different different uh, location so if you plot this kind of uh, n number of failure points in this graph you will notice this graph just goes like this you will get failure point all here depends upon different situation so that means when you're trying to reduce the stress value the number of cycle will increase and this graph has a peculiarity if you keenly watch what is that peculiarity think about it if you draw a line within this maybe you notice one thing every failure is happening above this line and there is no failure below this stress value so this particular stress value has an important uh, role right here if you take this stress value there is no failure below this amplitude and this amplitude sigma a what we called the endurance limit endurance limit of this material and we denoted this as sigma e so what is the peculiarity of uh, endurance limit here i would like to emphasize that one more below endurance limit there will be no fatigue failure that is the importance of endurance limit no fatigue here no fatigue failure 
no cyclic load failure or no dynamic load failure. So when a material undergoes fatigue failure, endurance limit is the control factor right here. When you design a material under endurance limit of that material, it can withstand theoretically infinite number of cycle. So that is what endurance limit. Now we can uh, go to the definition of endurance limit. The fatigue or endurance limit of a material is defined as the maximum amplitude of completely reversed stress that the standard specimen can sustain for unlimited number of cycle without fatigue failure. So this is what the definition here you should notice uh, these points. The first point is this. It is the maximum amplitude of completely reversed stress. It is the maximum, maximum amplitude. And it is stand for an unlimited number of cycle. Theoretically speaking, it's infinite number of cycle. When you go back to this situation, here for static loading, we have yield limitation for ductile. We have ultimate stress limitation for brittle. But in the case of dynamic or cyclic loading, you can consider sigma E or endurance limit. So here endurance limit is a control factor when an element experience a dynamic or fatigue loading then uh, in case of endurance limit situation if you want to calculate factor of safety you can go like factor of safety is endurance limit by allowable stress allowable stress or you can write it is equal to sigma e by sigma d so this equation will be useful when you design an element which undergoes dynamic loading and this has a wide range of application when an elements like a gears a crank a connecting road these elements are undergoes a continuous a cyclic loading you need uh, this limitation at which amplitude this material will give you infinite number of uh, cycle and uh, if you design these kind of elements below its endurance limit, it will not fail. Even though theoretically speaking, it's almost infinite number of cycle, this is not a practically viable. When you design something for infinite number of cycle, it's a kind of idealistic uh, statement. It is not possible. When you discuss about the practical uh, situation, we consider that infinity has 10 raised to 7 or sometimes it has 10 raised to 6. So many textbooks have different different uh, standards. In practical cases you need to design for 10 raised to 7 cycles or 10 raised to 6 cycle to avoid failure upon cyclic loading. Then the entire fatigue failure situation is classified into 2 according to the number of uh, cycles. Here when you separate uh, this with 10 raised to 3 cycle, when failure happening up to 1000 cycle, that is 10 raised to 3 cycle, these failure, these categories of failure, what we call uh, low cyclic failure, low cyclic fatigue failure. And failure which happens after 10 raised to 3 cycles is known as high cyclic low cyclic and high cyclic failure and every failure that happens low cyclic need not to be considered with endurance limit you can design according to sigma u value or sigma y value for any failure that happens on low cyclic endurance limit will only comes to picture when you design a material which fails upon high cyclic situation so these are some important points when you design an element under goes to dynamic stresses or fatigue failure. Hope you understood this topic as always. Thank you for watching.